So before we look at the uh, Linux command line tools, we will take a look at the Ubuntu uh, graphic user interface, which is uh, which is uh, quite intuitive and very easy to use. And uh, this uh, this graphic user interface is called Unity, and uh, we're going to talk about the Unity desktop environment in this video. So we will take a look at the Unity interface first. How we can actually uh, navigate through the Unity interface? How do we find files? How do we find applications? How do we um, launch applications, install software? Uh, how we can actually navigate through the Unity interface? And then we're going to look at some of the important web app web applications. So if you want to get connected, if you want to stay connected. How do you actually uh, use those web applications that's available on the Ubuntu? And then we're going to look at some of the productivity applications. How do you edit documents? How do you uh, generate uh, spreadsheets, p presentations? And uh, they have a pretty good office suite on the Ubuntu also. And it's open source. And then we're going to look at some of the multimedia applications. How do you, for example, edit photos? How do you import uh, photos into the system? How do you actually edit images? How do you listen to music, watch movies? Uh, those kind of applications. And then we'll have a better understanding about the entire Unity desktop environment. So this is actually a typical Ubuntu desktop. If you fin uh, after you have finished installing Ubuntu on your uh, computer, you are more or less likely to be presented with uh, a desktop that looks similar to this one. And it's got two bars, one vertical bar, and then one horizontal bar. This vertical bar is called the launcher. And the horizontal bar is called the panel. So the launcher has uh, many application icons embedded on it. And you can launch applications just by clicking on one of the icons. Suppose, uh, suppose I want to launch terminal. You can just uh, click it once and it's going to launch that particular application. And after you have started the application, for example, terminal, if you move your cursor to the panel, you're going to see the menu. That's the menu item related to this particular application. So this is uh, slightly different from uh, Windows applications. If you are, you have, be, if you have been using a PC or Windows uh, operating system, um, the menu bar actually stays with the application window, right? But uh, but this particular behavior, that menu bar stays on top of the screen, is um, is a is a is a behavior that's kind of different from a PC. But it's quite similar to a Mac. If you have used Mac before, this is a this is a feature that's similar to Mac actually. And this feature is actually configurable. If you don't like this kind of thing, if you want to have your menu bar that stays with your application window, you can change that. You can you can you can you can you can change the behavior. The default behavior is um, is configurable. And this launch bar is also configurable. You can decide which application icon is going to stay on it, which uh, which application icon is not going is not going to stay on it. So suppose I'm not using Audacity very often. It's a it's a it's a sound manipulation tool. So so I can just right click on it. This is a right click. And then I can choose unlock from launcher, and then it's going to disappear. And if I want to sort of uh, find an application that's not exactly embedded on my launcher, what I can do is that I can click on this on this particular icon that has the Ubuntu symbol on it. It's, it stays on the top of the launcher. I can click on it, and then I can type the application name that I'm trying to look for. Suppose I'm looking for Audacity. So as you type, Ubuntu is actually narrowing down the search region 
and it has already found the application for you so if you have found it you can just click on it and it's gonna uh, launch the application for you and once the application is uh, started you have this icon that's embedded on the launcher so if you wanna have this icon staying in the launcher you can right click on it and then you have an option that's called lock to launcher and then you can select that so uh, so if you so if you quit this application this icon is gonna stay there so that's that's uh, that's uh, that's the launcher you have multiple application icons embedded on it and then what I was trying to show you just now it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's this particular icon that's called the dash actually it's, uh, it has a name it's it's called a dash it allows you to search for anything either on your computer or online and uh, if you click on it you have a search bar you can type anything into this search bar last time I was typing audacity right and so it's and it's actually giving you lots of a different uh, uh, lots of lots of different uh, uh, search results so applications it's one category that's the applications installed on your laptop uh, on your on your desktop and then references those are some of the results discovered over the internet actually so so you have wikipedia pages you see so if you actually click on one of the uh, search results for example this one on the reference it's gonna open a, a web page so for this particular search audacity is telling you it's an audio editor and a free open source source, source, source digital audio editor and uh, other information related related to this particular application and it has a wikipedia page if you want to look at the wikipedia page you can just click on it and it's gonna open a uh, the Wikipedia page for this particular application. Let's go back to the uh, dash, and it's also making some suggestions. It's also making some suggestions about what might be uh, the stuff that you are looking for. For example, if you want to look for a CD album or something, right? and uh, there's a, a few icons in the bottom of the dash. These are called lenses. So, so, so the default lenses is for your home uh, home directory actually. So, this is a icon of house. It's actually your home directory. So you can you can switch to different lenses. For example, this thing, this icon actually represents applications. So if you want to sort of just search for applications, you can you can click on this icon and then type Audacity, and then it's going to list all the applications that has been stored in your uh, desktop that's that has uh, something that's related to the letters that you have typed into it and then you have another lens that's called uh, that's a file it has a file icon on it so so if you so it's gonna list some of the some of the files that you have uh, generated that's related to your search fields. You can imagine this one might be something related to video clips, sound, uh, pictures, and uh, this one is a sort of message or some kind of a uh, communication feeds, I think. And then you can also filter your search results by clicking here. You have multiple ways to filter your search results. So you have lots of uh, search results, but if you are only sort of concerned about applications, you can just uh, get rid of references, right? You can get rid of uh, more suggestions, or you can get rid of weather, and then it's gonna just leave you with applications.
and then let's look at this uh, panel on the right side of the panel there's uh, some some uh, some icons that's that's displaying the status of some of the applications so so this particular icon is related to the system if you click on it you have some menu items about the computer it's going to display the information about this particular computer some very basic information ubuntu help if you want to sort of get some help get some documentation about the ubuntu uh, operating system you can go there and then you have system settings we'll look at the system settings a little bit later it's a place where you can tweak you can configure your system how it looks and feels you can lock you can lock the computer lock the screen you can log out your your account you can suspend the machine you can shut down or restart shutdown actually has a restart button built into it so you can restart or shut down and then that's the system clock it also works as a calendar that's where you adjust the sound so this is where you actually adjust the sound you can also configure your sound card your sound input and output device suppose you have a microphone you can you can, you can configure that from sound settings reason box is an application that allows you to play music and we'll look at this particular application when we deal with multimedia that's the sound and then that's the input method you can switch to different uh, kinds of language different languages right. and then you have this indicator about your internet connections your network connections actually right network connections for now I'm using the wired connection one so I'm on Ethernet actually you can disconnect it you can display the connection information or you can edit your connections uh, this one is actually showing me I have something with my updates I think it's um, so Ubuntu actually automatically reminds you to update your system or update your software and I was having some uh, information it's telling me the update information is outdated or something so and uh, here's some icons that's related to user applications so this one is related to Dropbox so if you have installed Dropbox if you are using Dropbox it's gonna put an icon here and you can quickly access some of the functionalities of your Dropbox very quickly and here's related to the Google Drive And here's another application that I've, I have been using. It's uh, for for making the for making the screencast. Screencast. So so if I want to stop recording, I just click here. So basically, that's that's the panel. So what we have looked at so far, the launcher, the dashboard, or the dash, and then the panel. These are some basic components of the Ubuntu desktop. So, one important thing that we have to sort of look into is the software. How do we actually uh, get the software? How do we actually get software uh, from the internet? If you have been using Mac, or if you have been using any kind of operating system related to Mac, you have App Store. And Ubuntu also have something that's similar to an App Store that's called a Software Center which is this particular application it looks like uh, an A letter A that's uh, on a briefcase so if you don't have this icon on your launcher you can type it into the dash it's called a software center and then you can click on it so this is the app store for Ubuntu applications for or some other applications related to uh, Linux and it's um, it has many different categories so if you are interested in internet applications you can click here chat 
file sharing, mail, web browser and other kind of things. So suppose you are interested in installing the Chrome web browser on your Ubuntu uh, desktop. You can type Chrome here. It, find, it, it did not find anything that's related to Chrome. So Chrome itself is not exactly a open source uh, web browser. But it has a version that's open source. It's called Chromium web browser. So if you type CHROM or CHROM IUM, then you're going to find something. And if you would like to install it, you can click on install. And that software is going to be downloaded to a desktop and installed automatically for you. So before you try to install it, you can take a look at more info and try to find out uh, some basic information about this particular application. It has a link to the developer website. It will take you to the to the developer website. You can look at the reviews of this particular application. Is it good or bad? And if you decide after browsing all the information, if you decide to install it, you can install it. So this is for all software. You can also look at the software that's already installed. And if you want to remove some of the installed software, you can click on it. Click on remove. Click on remove. So this is a, this is a one way for you to actually it's a graphic way for you to, uh, to to browse software, install software, search for software, and uh, install and uninstall software. It's um, it's called the software center. Another important thing is about how to find files that's stored on your computer. How do you actually navigate through your whole file system on your computer? So uh, there is an application that's called Files, which is right here. And uh, it's uh, if you have been using uh, Windows before, uh, this particular application is similar to Explorer on Windows. And if you have used Mac before, this application is similar to Finder on Mac. And if you don't have this icon on the launcher, again, you can go to Dash and type Files. And it's going to give you this particular application here. And you can just click on it. So by default, it's going to open this window. And on the top here, it's showing you the name of the directory that it's displaying is called a home. It's your home directory. And you also have several buttons. You can go back and forth to the last place you were. And then you have, you have search. You can search for a particular file. And then you have different ways for organizing the file icons. So if you want to look at a list instead of lots of icons, you can click here, it's going to give you a list of the files that's under the home directory. And you can sort them according to name, according to size, type, or the day that, the time that you modified, the, the time that you last modified the, the particular file. And the directory structure is nested, it has a hierarchy of directories. So all those are actually folders. With this kind of icon, you're getting a folder. So if you want to uh, look into a particular folder, you can double click. And then you have a bunch of files and also some other folders. So if you want to go back, if you want to go back, you can you can click on this. Go to the previous visited location. Right. Or you can go here. So this is actually a, a path of a particular directory. So I'm 
on improved cluster, but the path to it is f is, uh, is is from home to video and then to improve cluster. So so if you want to navigate upward along your path, you can also use this bar. And if you want to sort of search for a particular file, if you know the file name, you can use this search. And then it's going to give you a search field. Suppose I want to look for a file that's called a launcher. So as you type, Ubuntu automatically narrows down the, the, the search fields. So it has found a file. And the search field can be narrowed down using these using these two buttons. You are searching in your home directory. But your computer could be shared by lots of people. Your home directory is just a small portion of the entire file system. And if you want to search through all the computer, uh, through, through, through the entire computer, the entire, the, the entire file system on this computer, you can, you can switch to all files. And if you want to add more filtering to your search results, you can use this button. Add a new criterion to this search. And then you have a choice. You can select different kind of file type. Instead of any, you can just uh, narrow it down to a video, for example. And then it's just going to give you present you with video files that has this thing, this particular search string in your in its file name. So if you want to close the search, if you don't want to sort of apply this search, you can you can close it. And then you can close it. So on the left hand side it has uh, some items that's called places. These are some of the locations in your file system that you are likely to visit very often. So home is one of the places that you are, li you are, you are likely to visit very often. And then you have desktop. If you store files on this desktop, I haven't stored anything on my desktop. But if you, I have st stuff on the desktop, then it's going to store in this folder. Documents, another another set of files. This is a folder actually. Downloads, music, pictures, videos, trash. And then you have several devices. These are actually hard. This this is actually an external hard disk that's connected to my computer. And if I want to eject it, I want to safely remove this external hard drive. I can click on this, and then it's going to eject my hard drive. Computer is uh, similar to the computer in Explorer if you have been using Windows before. So it's actually giving you a view of the of the of the entire file system. That's the root actually. You are, if you could click on computer, it's going to take you to the root directory of your file system. And your home directory is actually a a subdirectory in the root. It's it's on the home actually. If you go here, because I am the only user of this computer, so so there's only one folder under the home directory. But if you if I if I have multiple users on this computer, and then you have multiple home directories under the home folder. And each of the each of the folder will be for a different uh, user of this uh, computer. And if I want to go into my home directory, I just double click on home, and then it takes me to to my home directory, my own home directory. And also, you can find your places on the network. You can also navigate to to if you want to look at uh, what's available on the network on your local area network. You can go there and take a look at what's in the network. So that's the graphic way for you to navigate through your file system. And in my previous videos, I have been using the terminal quite often, which is this particular application. If you don't have this terminal application on your dash on your, on your launcher, again you can go to dash and type terminal, and then it's going to give you the terminal application. You can click on it, 
if you want to leave it on the i leave it on the launcher you can right click on the icon and then pick an option that's because this icon is already locked to the launcher right if you don't have it locked on on the launcher already you can this 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 it's going to give you a menu item allows you to lock it to the launcher so next time you can just click on the launcher instead of doing a dash search so once you open a terminal it's all it's automatically it will automatically take you to the to your home directory. So a wiggle, a wiggle in 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 the terminal actually means that you are under your home directory. So if you want to look at the content of your home directory, you can type ls. Then it's going to give you a set of files that's exactly corresponding to that what you are seeing in the files application under your home directory. So, so I have a I have a Dropbox folder. I have a Jobs, Dropbox directory in my terminal. I should see a Dropbox folder in my in the files application. And if suppose if I uh, go down a certain directory, suppose I go to video. If I want to go inside of the video folder, so CD I can CD change directory to video V I D E O. Yes, you can use tab to complete the entire file name. So you don't really have to type every letter of a file name or folder name. You can just use tab to complete it. And then you can do an LS again. It's going to list all the files that's inside the video folder. And if you go to the files application and double click on videos, you're going to be presented with exactly the same files, the same set of files. Actually, you have three folders, right? Build cluster, improve cluster, thumbnail. Build cluster, improve cluster, thumbnail, and then you have a bunch of uh, files. Launcher.mp4, Launcher.mp4. It's exactly the same. So you can navigate through your uh, file system by using either the graphic way using the files application or by using a terminal just doing ls and a cd so so in a in a terminal if you want to go back to the previous folder how do you actually do that you can do cd dot dot and then you're back to your home directory or you can go cd dot dot again it's going to go up one more level now I am under the uh, home directory. So in the finder or in the folder in the files application, if you want to go up one directory, if you want to uh, go back, you can you can you can use a key combination. That's AOT. Hold down the AOT key, hold down the Alt key, and then the arrow key, the arrow up key. Then you go up. You go up one level, and then again another level. So you can sort of see I am actually on the home directory now. So if I do an LS, I should be able to see my own home directory. And then if I go down and go into Pochin, I should be able to see my the, the folders that's inside of my uh, home directory. Sometimes you want to uh, locate a certain folder or file in your files app very quickly, and you can use the keyboard to 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 focus on that particular file or folder that you want to look look for very quickly and uh, so first thing you want to do is to make sure that the files app is active by clicking on it and then you can just uh, type start typing start typing on your keyboard suppose I want to locate the documents folder I can start to type the first few letters of documents and then the documents folder is automatically highlighted 
and suppose I want to find something else, suppose I want to find a job box then job box is highlighted so and uh, in the bottom of the in the bottom of the window you can sort of see it's actually displaying the letters you have typed and uh, suppose uh, the files application cannot find a particular folder suppose I I am looking for uh, a folder called say movies M O V I then nothing is highlighted but if you actually uh, if you just type M then it's going to come down to music right but if you do movies M O then nothing is displayed and nothing is highlighted because uh, this particular this particular directory doesn't have that particular file or folder that you are looking for uh, the same is true for files uh, if you go down to video, suppose I'm trying to locate the launcher LAU, and then it's coming down to the uh, highlighting the, the the particular file, and I, then I can sort of uh, tr sort of try double click on it and look at its content or do something else. So, so the keyboard can help you to quickly locate uh, the file or folder that you are looking for in the in the in the files application and but the thing, the thing that you have to sort of remember is that you have to sort of make sure that this application is active by clicking on it by clicking on it if you would like to create a new empty folder inside of the uh, current directory uh, what you have to do is to right click on any of the empty space the white space in your files application so if i do right click then i have a drop down menu one of them, well, the top option is called a new folder. So if I pick a new folder, and then it's going to create a uh, folder that's called untitled folder for me under the current directory. So if I want to rename it, I can right click on it again. And then I have an option that's called rename. And then I can give it any kind of name, let's say temp. Then I'm going to have a temp directory under my home directory. So this is in the terminal window. It's in the terminal. So I, I'm click. I have clicked on the terminal. If I do LS again, I should be able to see that directory that I just created. That's temp. And I can actually do. Suppose uh, suppose I want to delete this this uh, this directory that I just uh, created. I can right click on it, and then I have an option that's called move to trash. And then I have deleted that uh, directory. If I do LS here the temp has disappeared so suppose I want to create this uh, if suppose I want to recreate this thing this folder uh, in the terminal window I can type a command that's called mkdir and then followed by the name of the folder that I want to create so suppose I want to create mkdir temp and then in the files app you sort of see the temp, the directory that I just created in the terminal window. And if you want to delete, if you want to delete this folder uh, from from the terminal window instead of from the uh, files app, you can do rm, rm remove, remove dash r, which means that you are actually deleting a, you are removing a directory temp then it's going to sort of ask you do you really want to remove the directory it's sort of confirm with you uh, what's your intention and then you give it why yes and then it's going to remove the temp and the same is true in the files application the temp directory has disappeared and uh, if you want to create a new empty document for example if you if you right click on any of the empty space inside of your uh, files application then you have a new document menu item so again this this menu this menu this drop down menu was brought up by the right click in an empty space in your files application and then you can create an empty document then it's gonna you can type the name so suppose let's say test then you have an empty text text file that's called a test and if you double click on it it's gonna automatically gonna open a application that's called a gedit we're going to talk about the editors we're going to talk about the editors in more detail later in a later video but now you can type any kind of text test one two three any kind of text into this uh, document and then save it 
if you are done editing this file, you can sort of open, uh, close it. If you don't want to keep this file, you can remove it by right click, and again move to trash. Then you're going to delete it. So, if you right click on any of the folder, if you right click on any of the folder, then you have a bunch of options: cut, copy, this kind of thing, move to, copy to, rename, move to trash, compress move the job properties the last option that's called properties let's click on properties and it's gonna tell you um, some information about this particular folder for example how uh, what's actually the the size of uh, all the files inside of this folder so for now I have 69 uh, megabytes inside of this folder and it's gonna tell you permissions so everything on a Linux operating system has permissions the permissions will decide who can read it, who can write it, uh, what kind of people can sort of uh, make any changes to particular files. Local network share. Do you want to share this folder uh, over your uh, uh, local area network? So, so, so you can adjust those uh, properties of this particular folder by right click, by right click on this folder and uh, use the properties. Uh, menu item and you can achieve pretty much everything that you can do uh, in the in the files application by using the terminal window also and uh, we're gonna discuss that kind of thing in more detail when we talk about the command line tools um, especially when we talk about terminals so uh, so 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 files is a graphic way of doing things, and the terminals will allow you to use the command line to 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 achieve the same kind of goal. Now let's look at how we can actually c configure the Ubuntu system. So there are multiple ways for you to actually uh, configure a system, and there are multiple applications you can use to make those configurations. So. So we're going to look at four applications. We'll look at this called System Settings. This application is pre-installed once you after you, uh, once you, once you have installed your Ubuntu operating system. This this application comes with the uh, the operating system, and the other three are not. So you have to sort of if you don't have it installed already, you have to go to the software center and uh, install them. So one of them is called Unity Tweak Tools. So this Unity Tweak Tool allows you to configure your Unity desktop environment. And then this one is called a Tweak Tool. It has a wider range of um, configuration settings. And this one is called a, a Compass Config Settings Manager, or CCSM. <coughs> These three applications can be found on the software center. So if you open your software center, and search for Unity Tweak Tool, then you can install it. Because this one is installed on my system already, so it doesn't have an install option here. But if you don't have it installed on your system, you can there is a button. There will be a button called Install, and you can click on it and install the the Tweak Tool. So let's look at the system settings. If it's not on your a launcher you can go to the dash and uh, search for system settings or there's another way for you to do that is to use the panel and then you have a system settings it's going to give you exactly the same dialog box it give you this uh, particular application actually so 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 using system settings you can configure lots of things so personal hardware system one of the things that's quite useful is the appearance i think here you can set the theme, set the theme, set the wallpaper, select the wallpapers. You can add more wallpapers to your to your collection. If you have uh, good-looking pictures, you can pick those as your uh, wallpaper. And you can select your theme. For now, it's uh, the default is ambience, but you can change that theme to different uh, types of uh, themes. You can change the launcher icon size. For now, it's um, if you have more icons, if you have more and more icons, you can make the icon size smaller. And uh, it 
it's uh, it's it will allow you to put more icons on the launcher. Let's look, and then you have a tab that's called behavior. Uh, one of the things that's quite useful is to enable workspaces. So if you enable the workspaces, you're gonna have one more icon that's gonna be locked onto the launcher. That's called a workspace switcher. If you click enable it, and then then you're automatically gonna get this thing. It's called a workspace switcher, and if you click on it. You're gonna have uh, multiple workspaces that you can select from. So if I click here, I'm going to the other workspace, and there's a quick key combination allows you to switch workspaces very quickly. It's uh, you have to hold down the Control and Alt key, so C T R L and A L T key, and then use the arrow key. If you wanna go left, use the left arrow key. Go down, use the down arrow key. So you have to hold down the Control and Alt key together, and then use the arrow key to navigate through your different workspaces. So this is the enable workspaces, and then here is the menu for a window. So, so what I was telling you is that uh, if you have, if you are a PC user. The menu for a particular application comes with that application window, but in Ubuntu it's different. The menu for a particular application is in the panel. So if you move your cursor to the panel, the panel is going to adapt to the menu items for that particular application. So suppose I have two, suppose I have two applications open. So so now I have the system settings application and the terminal application that's open. So if I click on the terminal application and then move my cursor to the panel, the menu is going to be adapted to the menu items for the terminal. And then if I go click on the system settings window, the application window, and then move my cursor to the to to the to the panel, it's going to the menu item is going to change to the many items for the for the system settings application, and you can change that behavior. So that behavior is changed here. Show the menu for a window, either in the menu bar or in the Windows title bar. If you want to go back to the previous window, you can just click on All Settings. And uh, there's other configurations, for example, pr setting the privacy and uh, security stuff, Bluetooth, hardware, display, how you actually can configure your display, keyboard, mouse and touchpad, how you can actually, uh, if you have a particular mouse that you want to uh, change it to your likings, then you can uh, configure it here, test your settings. Network, here you can actually change your network. Wired connections options it will allow you to configure a network. And another place for you to actually get to this dialog box is from the panel again. On the panel, you have a uh, icon that's for the in uh, network connections. You can click on it, and then you have uh, edit connections, and then you can edit connections. It's exactly the same dialog box for you to edit. A certain connection. Connection. And then backups. <laughs> so Ubuntu system can automatically backup stuff for you. So usually you leave the machine open. Uh, uh, you can. You can. Um, you can attach an external hard disk to your machine and then schedule when you want your update to be done every day. So so you can specify which folder you want to back up. For example, if you just want to back up your home folder, which is often the case because uh, lots of the system files don't really need many of the system files don't really need the need, need you to back up it because you can uh, get them 
from 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 the installation hard disk or installation uh, CD or installation USB. So you can specify what's actually the folder to ignore. Storage location where you can pick a hard disk for you to uh, make the backup. So you can uh, there are lots of uh, choices for, for you to do backups. And then scheduling. You can specify what's your when do you want to uh, uh, make a backup. So every day you want to do a backup every day, and keep at least the six months. So the files that's too old, older than six months, it's going to be sort of uh, deleted from your backup disk. So you can change the frequency from day to week, or you can keep the you can you can change the oldest file, the, the age of the file, from from at least six months to at least one year to forever. And uh, you have to sort of turn on the backup, otherwise it's not going to uh, do the automatic uh, backup for you. So as long as your external hard disk is connected to your uh, computer, and then it's going to automatically update it for you, uh, key, uh, backup for you. So that's the systems system settings application. There's another application that's called uh, Unity Tweak Tool. If you don't have it, you can install it from the software center, and then you can sort of launch it. So this is a tweak tool, a configuration tool for you to configure the look and feel of your uh, graphic user interface for your. Uh, Unity desktop environment. So, for example, you can change the launcher. Lots of uh, configuration about the launcher to make it look uh, more beautiful. Panel. Lots of applications about the panel. How do you, how do you make the panel more more beautiful? And uh, window manager. One of the things that's quite useful is hot corners. So, so you can specify if you if you move your mouse to a certain corner, it's gonna display some kind of behavior that might be useful. So, this is a hot corner called show workspaces. So if my if I move my cursor to the up right corner, it's gonna display all my four workspaces. And I can pick a workspace I want to go to. So suppose I want to go to the first workspace. If I want to go back, I can do that again. Move my cursor to the upper right corner. And then pick the workspace I want to go to. And then I have another hot corner. That's the lower right corner. It's called a spread all windows. So if I move my cursor here, to the then it's going to display all the windows or all the application windows that's that's open through all the workspaces and then I can pick an application I want to go to suppose I want to go to Unity Tweak Tools so this kind of behavior is automatically available on Mac operating systems if you are using uh, Mac OS X then you have um, hot corners also and the behavior is configurable also you also have hot edges you see hot edges so the the behavior for each of the corner can be sort of uh, configured also, and you also can change the theme here, change the icons, cursors, fonts, systems. That's Unity Tweak Tool, and then you also have another application called Tweak Tool. Some of the capabilities actually overlap. With among all the different uh, configuration tools, right? for example, in the in the Tweak tool, you also can configure its appearance. What's actually the the theme you want to use? Suppose I use uh, I want to switch to a Numix. Numix. I want to use a Numix theme actually. So I want to use a icon that's a Numix circle, and uh, then my desktop is going to look like that. You can sort of see the changes 
in the icons in the launcher and the look and the feel of each of the windows are different now you can change the desktop background also it doesn't have to be uh, so I'm changing it to, to, to jellyfish or something so, so it's gonna automatically change the back, uh, text of background and There's a one more configuration tool that's called Compit Config Settings Manager or CCSM. That's quite useful also. And it gives you even deeper accessibility to the entire system. To the look and feel of the entire system. So so you can change the behavior of your windows, how it actually interacts with its surroundings. And you can also change the effects animations fading windows and this tool is actually quite powerful it will take some time to actually master it and if you are uh, not exactly familiar with uh, how how this kind of a application works it's better to look into the tutorials on the web and uh, try try to uh, sort of find out what's actually the the correct way for using those tools before you uh, make any changes to your system because um, it's uh, it's a very powerful application actually now let's look at some of the useful uh, web applications uh, the most useful web application is probably the browser and uh, the Firefox browser comes with the operating system so it's pre-installed and if it's not on your uh, launcher you can go to the dash and search for Firefox and it's gonna give you the Firefox web browser um, the latest version of the Firefox uh, browser is quite stable is very stable very fast and has a very small uh, resource requirement so it's not gonna sort of consume like a, a lots of your memory or your bandwidth it's um, it's a very it's actually very good and as I was showing you if you don't like the Firefox web browser you can also install other types of browsers on Ubuntu from the software center software center so if you don't have software center on your launcher you can go to the dash and type software center and last time I was showing you how to find and install Chrome Google Chrome or the open source version of the Chromium web browser so you can install it and uh, it will function pretty much the same as um, Google Chrome and if you have preference or for other types of uh, browsers you can also sort of search for uh, if you go to the page and then under the categories of the different applications there's a category called internet and you can pretty much find all the web related applications here FileZilla it's a file transferring application that you can use and uh, uh, Chrome the Chromium is also here and uh, so once you have a so let me close the software center once you have the browser you can pretty much uh, do everything you would like to do uh, these days, lots of people actually use the browser as its um, as um, as as the operating system because you can pretty much get everything done just inside the browser. So you can check email, you can uh, go to Facebook, you can uh, use Twitter, you can use Twitter and uh, other, uh, and you can also use Google Docs to edit documents. So the browser basically allows you to pretty much do everything. And uh, there are also desktop applications that allows you to uh, get connected all the time so for example I have um, Skype that's installed on my uh, desktop and um, so so Ubuntu actually has um, Skype uh, that's kind of prepackaged and you can try to install it so let me close my browser but to install Skype 
requires uh, some slight modification to the system. So I'm going to the dash and I'm going to open a new application called Software and Updates. So basically this application, it's not on my launcher. So I have to sort of go through the dash to, to open it, Software and Updates. And then it's going to open a dialog box showing you lots of the uh, lots of ca different categories of about about soft uh, different kinds of softwares and updates so you have ubuntu software that's uh, that's maintained by the ubuntu company uh, canonical canonical that's uh, that's the company that's uh, supporting ubuntu and you also have other software you see and if you go to the other software tab and you have to make sure that the canonical partners is selected so you have two canonical partners. One is for source code. You don't. If you just want to use the application instead of uh, developing it, uh, you, all you need is the binary package for the software. So all you have to do is to select the first one. You have to make sure that this th this box is checked before you do the rest of the steps to install Skype, and then close it. Of course, uh, of course, in your case, you have to sort of uh, if you sort of changed something it's going to ask you to to authenticate you have to give the password authenticate and then you can just uh, close it so i clicked on this box so i'm going to uncheck it and then i'm going to close it so so it's telling you that uh, the information about available software is out of date because you have made some changes so you have to reload you have to reload everything. Reload the software list. And then all you have to do is to install it. So uh, in this case you have to open a terminal window. So if the terminal is not on your launcher, you have to go to the dash and type terminal. And then it's going to give you a terminal app, and then it's going to open a new terminal. So at this stage, all you have to do is to type sudo apt get install skype. And then it's going to install skype for you. So it's going to ask for my password, and then it's going to install skype. Because uh, I have the latest version installed already, so so it's just telling me that without installing it. But in your case, it's going to install Skype. And the thing about Skype is that uh, it's not going to automatically put a icon in your launcher. So so the first time you run Skype, you have to do it from the command line. So you have to type Skype from the terminal. And then once you have launched Skype, it's going to put a icon in there. It's going to put an icon in the launcher and then you can right click on it and then make sure that you select lock to the launcher and then you're going to always have skype that's on your launcher so every time if you want to connect to your friends you can click on the launcher so that's that's um that's skype that's skype and once you have skype installed and if you have a skype account you can log into it and uh, this is um, uh, this is your status. It's gonna put an icon in your panel, and then it's gonna show you the uh, show you this icon, and you can sort of uh, look at some of the recent chats, and uh, you can uh, respond to your friends, and So it's giving you uh, some kind of uh, interface, so you can see all your contacts, uh, the online contacts, and uh, send them an instant message. And you can call phone from from your Skype, and then uh, add contacts uh, menu. That's um, so. So that's Skype, and. 
you also you may also have other applications that you want to install. For example, you might want a, a email client. A email client. Um, I myself often use G Gmail from the browser. So if you open the browser and you can just uh, go into Gmail and uh, deal with your email from the web browser. But if you would like to have a, a desktop, desktop account, a desktop, G a desktop email uh, client, you can also use the uh, building Thunderbird. So Thunderbird, Thunderbird is an email cl client that can be connected to your uh, online email uh, accounts. So Thunderbird is pre-installed with your Ubuntu uh, operating system. If you want to uh, launch it, you can just uh, go to the dash and click on Thunderbird Mail. And it actually has more than uh, email capabilities. It has, um, you see, you have email and you can also do chat. It's going to allow you to select different kinds of... So so I I never used Thunderbird on this particular machine before. So so. So I don't have a I I did not set up an email address on in Thunderbird so I'm just gonna skip. Uh, I think I'll configure account later. So you have email, and you also have chats, news group feeds, move move mail, and so so if you want to do chats, it allows you to select different kind of a, a chat server. Google Talk, Facebook Chat, IRC, Twitter, XMPP. So, so Thunderbird is um, is a desktop application that allows you to set up email chats, news groups, and uh, feeds, RSS feeds actually. So, uh, and it's pre-installed. You can find it from the dash. If you prefer to use a desktop application that connects to your email, and um, if you want to use uh, Facebook. Of course, you can still use the browser to log into Facebook. So if you sort of just go through the browser, you can just log in, and then you deal with your Facebook business there. Uh, but but Ubuntu also has a, a Facebook uh, desktop application that's called a Facebook Messenger, and you can get this Facebook Messenger from the software center. And if you just search Facebook, then it's going to give you all the uh, applications that has uh, Facebook uh, uh, that's Facebook related. So you can see Facebook Messenger is right here, and you can install it. And then it's going to give you a icon in the launcher that's called Facebook Messenger. And every time you want to uh, use Facebook, you can. You can use uh, this application instead of using a browser. And uh, that's Facebook. That's Facebook. So um, some people likes to uh, some people like to use uh, Twitter, and uh, there are also Twitter applications, Twitter a web applications. Um, if you so so, of course you can still use the browser to log into a Twitter, and uh, if you would prefer to use a desktop application that's connected to Twitter. There's an application that's called a. Um, it's a. It's a. It's this application. It's called a Turpio. It's called Turpio. And again, you can find Turpio in the software center. So if you go to the software center, Ubuntu software center, just search for Turpio. Uh, you can you can you can download it. It's a, it's a it's a client that that's a, that's quite good, quite stable. It's a, and looks quite beautiful, and uh, it allows multiple columns. So you can put a column in your. So here's my. It's 
you see, one column for the timeline, one column for the replies, one column for the directs, and one column for the favorites. You can put up to like five different columns. So you have a settings button here, and then you can set the different uh, columns. So I've just added another uh, column that's sent. So Topio is uh, Topio is uh, one of the Twitter clients that you can use to to uh, to deal with Twitter. And uh, there are many web applications available in the software center, so you can always find something that's useful. And another thing about web applications is that uh, you can always Google and search for the web application uh, of your needs. And uh, uh, and uh, you have um, uh, you have different browsers that can be installed on Ubuntu. You have um, uh, desktop clients that allows you to do Facebook and Twitter. And uh, if you also have um, uh, message needs, messaging, uh, you want to do messaging with your friends, you can uh, install Skype. And uh, uh, Ubuntu also has a, a chat application that's uh, pre-installed. It's called Empathy. It's called uh, Empathy Internet Messaging, and I myself um, uh, don't really use it, but uh, you can actually use it with either your uh, Twitter account or Facebook account or Google. You have uh, a large number of uh, choices to set up accounts, so Empathy is uh, another choice for you to do chats, for, for you to do sort of messaging. And, uh, um, The web applications um, that I myself often use are limited to those web applications. But in your case, you may have uh, you may have needs for different applications. And in that case, you have to go to Software Center and uh, see if you can find it. Uh, if you cannot find it, you can always Google and see if Ubuntu or Linux distributions uh, have those uh, packages. Uh, sometimes you have to install from the source code on Linux. This is often the case, actually, um, especially if you are using some software that's not uh, prepackaged or it's not uh, uh, maintained by a certain group of people. If that's the case, you can install it from the source code. And uh, in a later video, I will show you how to actually uh, compile source codes and install them on your desktop uh, environment which is not as complicated as, as you might imagine so um, so that's uh, that's web applications